today what we're going to be making is we're going to make a chicken soup uh, using a whole chicken. We're going to do a mushroom bisque, a, a cauliflower bisque, and a carrot and ginger soup. So let's get started. Okay, so here's everything that we're going to be using in our cooking today. We've got some really nice ingredients here. We've got a couple of different types of mushrooms. We bought them pre-sliced, save some time. We've got fresh herbs. I have the uh, Greek nonfat yogurt, which is going to take the place of cream and make the bisque really yummy. We also have our lemon and orange, which is going to be the zest that brings some lightness to the dishes and freshness. And then we got our chicken, shallots, ginger, everything we need to make some nice, light, delicious, hearty, soul-satisfying soups. The first one we're going to work on is the chicken soup. So what we have here is we've got my pot. I'm going to actually cook the chicken. So we can get a little close-up of the chicken in there. We've got the chicken in here and I've got like scraps from celery. I've got my scraps from peeling my carrots. I've got scraps from peeling onions. There's some bay leaf in here. There's some thyme. There's also some sage in there. I'm going to cut the stems off the parsley. When uh, you're kind of making a stock, you want the stems of the parsley because that's where you get the real flavor out of. I'm going to top this off with water, put a cover on it and let it simmer for about an hour. So the chicken soup is covered. It's uh, getting up to a boil. Once it gets to a boil, I'm going to cut that down and simmer it so that that makes a beautiful stock. This is going to be for our carrot soup. So what I did is I took some carrots, peeled them. They're in the oven right now with some olive oil, salt, and pepper because I think roasting the carrots is going to give it a little bit more sweetness. It's going to give a really so this is ginger root. I don't know how familiar you are with it. You can buy it already grated if you'd like, but if you want to do it yourself, the easiest way to do it is with a spoon. So I'm going to just demonstrate real quick. So you just take the edge of the spoon and you just peel it just like that. So while we're waiting for the carrots to finish up, I've got a pot here. I'm going to put some olive oil in here. I'm going to saute some onions out and get them nice and soft. As you can see, I just cut them into small dice. This is our ginger that we peeled. And I'm not really too worried about the size of it because it's going to get um, blended up once we are finished with our soup. So I'm going to let that saute away until it gets nice and soft. And then we're going to pull the carrots out and get ready. Okay, so our chicken soup is going. It hasn't come to a boil, but as you can see, if you want to look in this pan, the onions have gotten nice and soft. That's exactly where we want them to be. My carrots were in the oven. You can see that there's some caramelization on them. Roasting vegetables is definitely a way to get the most amount of flavor out of the vegetable. Kind of a hack. If you want something super flavorful, put some olive oil on it, salt and pepper, and throw it in the oven. Now we're going to get all of this into the oven. So even this oil, we want to make sure we get this oil in there. It's olive oil, but it's also the um, liquid from the carrots. As the carrots are cooking, they sweat out some of their moisture. That has a really nice flavor to it. There's the ginger in there, and we got the carrots in there, and now we're going to add some vegetable stock. And just like the chicken soup, we're going to let that simmer away. You can use any kind of stock you want. Um, you know, since this is a vegetable dish, this actually becomes vegan and non-dairy and gluten-free by doing it with vegetable stock. So I'm just going to leave that to come to a boil, and then I'm going to turn it down and simmer it. Now, we get that going, we get that going. I cut up some cauliflower while we were there. Um, I tried to get it as uniform as possible because while it's roasting, I want to sort of get the same evenness and color on it. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this in the oven. It's 350, and I would imagine to get a nice color on that, we're going to set the timer for... Probably 20 minutes. Okay, so now we're starting our next soup. So we've got the chicken that's going, reminder, we've got the carrot soup that's already simmering, uh, which is basically only one step away from being ready. We've got our cauliflower in the oven, and now we're going to take the mushrooms. What I have is a mix of the cremini mushrooms and white mushrooms. Remember, I bought them sliced, so it saved me a lot of time. I've got some diced shallots, olive oil, salt, pepper, and thyme. I'm going to just pop those in the oven. Those won't take as long, so I'd say we've got still 15 minutes on the cauliflower. So I'll probably pull them out five minutes before that, so about 10 minutes. Okay, so now we're starting to get to the final stages for the carrot soup and the mushroom soup. So as you can see, the mushrooms and shallots are nicely cooked. Um, those are roasted up in the oven. What I have them on is some, high, uh, some medium heat, and I'm just sort of wanting to 
evaporate some of that liquid that came out. Mushrooms are mostly water, so they do give off a lot of water. So I'm trying to get rid of that because that will intensify the flavor even more. And then I'm going to deglaze it with some white wine. While we're waiting for that, you can see the carrot soup is simmering quite nicely. This has still got a little ways to go and the cauliflower is still roasting in the oven. I brought out two of the pieces of equipment that are going to be most important to our cooking day. So this is a blender. This is an immersion blender. Um, you could also use a food processor. Uh, I find that these two pieces of equipment work the best. But basically, once we're done making sure that everything's soft enough in here, all the flavors are melted in here, they're going to go into one of these two, and that becomes your soup. I don't usually do the final seasoning until after I blend it up, because once you blend everything together, the flavors are going to change. So now for the fun part. The carrot soup is ready to go. The only thing I have left to do is blend it up so it's nice and creamy and smooth. Add some orange zest, taste it, and put the final taste. If it's getting too thick, you can always add more stock. So I've got my vegetable broth right here. I'm going to add a little bit more to that. Close up with that um, beautiful texture. Look at that. Gorgeous. Takes a little work, but you can get it there. I'm going to zest the orange now. Better to do it upside down so you collect it right in the part of it. And this is just going to make the soup super light and bright. When you think about it, what we have in here is we have onions, we have ginger, we have fresh carrots, we have olive oil, we have salt, pepper. There's nothing in here that's unhealthy for you. Quite the contrary, we have everything in here that's super healthy for you. So basically, that soup is done. Now, we're gonna work on the mushroom next. So the white wine is evaporating, and that's giving it some super flavor. Um, white wine is just sort of one of those things that has a background flavor that you don't really taste the wine, it just sort of emboldens the dish and gives it some depth. Now we're gonna pull our cauliflower out since our timer went off. Ooh, look how pretty that is. Beautiful cauliflower. Once we are ready to work with the cauliflower, I'm going to do a few other things. I've got some mirepoix over here, so I've got some onions and some garlic, and then we're going to do some herbs and get that on the stove. Let's do it. I've got some onions, if you can look in this big tall pan. I guess I'm, I don't have as many pans as I thought I did. I've got some thyme in there, some bay leaves, some sage, some onions. As soon as those onions sweat a little bit, I'm going to throw the garlic in there because garlic cooks much faster than onion and I don't want to burn it. And then we're going to start finishing off our second soup. So we've already finished the carrot soup. We're just about to start the cauliflower soup and this is the mushroom soup. I've got in here that mixture of mushrooms you saw on the stove with the shallots and the herbs, uh, thyme, and then deglaze with the white wine. And I've added beef stock to mine. You can use veggie stock. Um, it doesn't matter. When I do my blender, I always put my hand over the top, especially if I'm working with hot liquid. And I'm going to put this right on a puree, because what's going to happen is the heat's going to make it jump right up and we'll go flying everywhere. So we got a couple things going here. we got our mushroom soup, which is all blended up. We're going to talk about that in a minute. I've got the cauliflower, which the uh, garlic and the onion sweated out. The herbs are in there. I have the roasted cauliflower. I'm going to add stock. I want to cover it. Um, I may have to add more stock when we go to process it. And then I just want this to chill out for a little bit, let those herbs really um, get working in there. And then we're going to check on our chicken last. So let's attend to the mushroom soup. So we blended it up, and I just want to show you guys the texture. See how smooth that is? It's beautiful. Right. See that? All right, so we want to taste it. Tastes delicious. The only thing left to do is to zest some lemon. Again, these little tips at the end, the lemon, the orange, they just give the dish a little bit of brightness and just make it jump right out of you. Because just because you eat healthy doesn't mean you have to give up flavor. So we're going to give that a little swirl right in the blender and then we're going to taste that. 
Delicious, absolutely delicious. All right, next and last, last soup we have to go, because this is just about ready to go. We just need to let that sit and simmer and get all flavorful, is our chicken. So this is what it looks like. It's been sitting simmering away for about an hour. I got a meat thermometer here. And basically, I'm just checking to make sure that the chicken is done. So I'm going to go into the deepest part of the thigh to check the temperature. And we're at, we're at 165. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want to do. So I'm going to actually break all this down. I'm going to strain the broth. I'm going to pull the chicken out, let it cool a little bit, because then I'm going to pull it apart. And then we're going to start building the last soup, which is the chicken soup. So we're starting the chicken soup, the final soup. So our cauliflower soup is ready to go into the blender. We're going to do that in a minute. And what I did over here is I strained off the stock. So basically, when we did that thing with the chicken, we made an authentic chicken stock. If you're wondering why the color is interesting, it's because I left the skins on the onions and also the amount of carrots that were in the stock. So this is stock. It's just made from the chicken itself and the flavor of the chicken, the vegetables and the aromatics, which are all the herbs that we put in there. We broke the chicken down. We've got the thighs. This is going to be more chicken than we're going to need for the soup. I'm probably just going to use the breast meat, and then I'll probably make some kind of uh, a dish, maybe like a fricassee with the with the thigh meat. So now let's look at this. We've got this going, which is my miroir for the chicken soup. So very traditional onions, carrots, and celery. And we're just going to let those cook down until they're nice and soft, and then we'll take the next step. So over here to our cauliflower soup, we are going to ladle this into the blender. The herbs are fine to leave in there. Do the blender. I don't want to re I don't want to fill it too much because this is super hot. So I want to make sure that uh, we don't burn ourselves and it's got plenty of room to expand. So the soup is out of the blender. As you can see, it's super silky smooth. Um, I mentioned early on that we're going to use yogurt. Cream is usually added to these soups because the fattiness of it gives it body, and without it. It's good, but it gets better with some kind of soaking it or something that gives it body. So instead of using cream, I'm using 0% non-fat Greek yogurt. The best way to incorporate it is to take, it's almost like you're going to take a little bit of the soup and a little bit of the yogurt and stir it together so it's nice and smooth. Otherwise, the yogurt might clump up in your soup. So we added that, and now we're going to mix that together. Make sure that gets nicely incorporated. And then I'm going to add a little bit of lemon zest. Because again, it needs a little bit of brightness. You want to lift that. You want to have the depth of flavor, but you also want to have that nice light finish. So let's work on that. And then we'll third soup will be in the books. So let's taste that. That's nice. This is our miracle for our chicken soup. I put a little salt and pepper in there. So now we're starting to build the soup, and we're starting to build flavor, which is the reason why I added salt and pepper in the stage, because every stage of building the soup, you're going to want to add flavor, whether it's through herbs or another ingredient. So we'll let those get nice and soft, and then we'll finish the soup up, and then we'll be done. Okay, so now we're finalizing our final soup. So we've got the stock that we made. I put um, herbs in here. I have some bay leaf. I have some thyme. I have some sage. I have some chopped parsley. The thyme and uh, bay leaf will pull out. I'm going to throw a lot of spinach. This looks like a lot of spinach, but spinach cooks way down very quickly. So once this gets softened up, it's not going to take up that much space in the soup. I'm going to add a can of peeled tomatoes. I buy them whole and then I break them up with my hands before I put them in. I've got a can of white cannellini beans. That's going in there as well. And then last but not least, the chicken. This is the white wheat chicken that I took off the round up rest. with the other one four soups. So we have our cauliflower soup, we have our carrot and ginger soup, we have our mushroom soup. Um, these are all obviously all cream soups with no cream, which is pretty cool. The mushroom soup, a lot of times at the end when I serve it, I'll use a little bit of uh, yogurt and just drizzle it on it. Uh, the carrot soup doesn't really need a drizzle. And then the uh, 
chicken soup. So we're just going to let this all cook together and then season it. The final thing that we're going to put in, this is the final tip I'm going to give you, we gave lemon zest and orange zest to these to brighten it up. With this particular soup, I'm going to add a little bit of white vinegar at the very end and that just lifts everything up. So, bon appetit. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen today. It's Candy from One Team Kitchen. Happy New Year. Happy, healthy New Year.